Hey, thanks for coming. I'm sorry it's taken me a while to get back to you. But I've been having too much fun. Went to a retreat. Extraordinary things happened. People became happy. Today, I want to talk about that happiness and Dharma. You don't hear people talking about Dharma too much. And when they talk about it, it's always as if it's something that is detasteful slightly. It's something you should be doing. Well, if you're really doing Dharma correctly, you're happier. Dharma is a type of karma. So the title is Dharma. Karma that leads to the happy flow. Let me go back just a little bit and talk about karma itself. Karma is technically translated as action with the implication that you do an action, you get a reaction. But it means action. Dharma is a special type of action. Karma and Dharma have the same ending. Dharma most times is, is translated as right action. Now, Dharma really means, if you expand the definition a little bit, those actions that make you happier. And the primary directive of Tantra says make yourself happier the next instant. So to there's a correspondence between the two. So the question that you might ask is well, if I'm making myself happier the next instant, what if I do an action that other people think is bad? Well, the proof of the pudding is in an eating. Okay, let's take an example. You're outside and you're planting something, a mosquito comes along and lands on your arm and starts to bite you. What's the right action? Well, if you swat the mosquito and kill it, is that the right action? Let's go to the criteria. Does it make you happier to kill the mosquito? And the answer invariably is going to be yes. Okay, well, let's take another example. Suppose you're working in a laboratory on an insect repellent. And you spray your arm with the insect repellent and you put it into the caged area where all these mosquitoes are, are, are going. Now, is it right action to swat the mosquito in this instant? 
Well, not if you're paid to let them bite you. I mean, you're paid good money. So right action in this case is to let the mosquito bite you so they can count them. How many bites per minute, per hour, whatever. So right action depends on context. And usually context tells you what everybody says you should do. Is it the right action to go out to take a kid off the street if you see a car coming towards it? Absolutely. But what if, if you go out in front of the car and both you and the kid get hit? And you couldn't have saved the kid anyway. The right action in that, in that instance was not to go, as sad as that may be. I can remember my guru, Swami Satchidananda, giving a talk at a retreat. And somebody asked him, even back then, is it right to kill somebody? And he said, normally it's not. But if I had a gun and somebody broke into this church and had a gun was going to kill you all, it is absolutely my belief that I need to kill him. Okay, so you see all this violence out in the streets about Black Lives Matter. This is a very, very difficult situation to deal with. What's the Dharma? I was talking to a black guy yesterday, and I asked him about this. And one of the things that he said was Willie Brown, the guy in Ferguson that was killed, was asking for it from his perspective, which surprised me. He said that the, he, should have, he should have known better. Well, yes, he should have. But should the car have shot him? No. That still was a wrong action. That was not Dharma. The five policemen were killed in Dallas. Was it a dharmic action for that black man to have killed him, killed those five people, those five policemen? In his mind, he thought he was doing the right thing. So but the answer is still, he should not have done that. Okay. Yogananda, the great spiritual master, lived through the Second World War. And after war was over, when Germany was defeated, somebody asked him about a communist. And you know what his answer was? His answer was, yes, you should turn them into the FBI. Now, was that Dharma? Answer is yes. Why? Because communism as a philosophy did its best to destroy religion, saying it was the opiate of the masses. And there are similar choices going to be made soon about the terrorist factions of Islam. So, one of the things you can see from this talk is, is that this is a hard subject without context. 
What is the ultimate context of Dharma? The ultimate context of Dharma is that if you do it, you get happier, you purify the mind. And soon you will see, like Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's Dharma in action. Getting closer to God and seeing God within yourself. The outward signs is, is you do good to everybody as best you can. And your energy continues to go up, your happiness, the happy flow. You, the student of spirituality, concentrates on going towards that happy state. So, people say to me, and they tell me, oh yes, this, this practice will lead to samadhi. Well, yes, no, indifferently. There's faster ways. There's better ways. And they all come back to the statement, be here now. So you want to be checking yourself with your happy meter. You know, if you're not happy listening to me, if you're that, you're more sad, you're more disgusted, I'm the first one to tell you to go. I have to walk the talk. So this is, okay, so because the choice to be happier can be difficult sometimes. You always have to be, have, have a mental stance and say, okay, maybe I've made a mistake. You don't think so, you know. When I fix roofs, I always think, oh, I found a problem and I fixed it. So I'm the most surprised person when somebody calls me up and says, well, you didn't fix it. And so I go back. And now my procedure tells me, okay, what is it that I missed? Okay, so I treat it like a new discovery. So what I'm telling you is, I have a procedure when I make a mistake. It's okay to make a mistake. Yogananda readily admitted when he made a mistake. I talked to Swami Kriyananda before he died. And it's on their video somewhere. They taped it. And I asked him. I said to him, Did Yogananda ever admit he made a mistake? And Kriyananda, who was, his, who was his private secretary for three years and so saw many, many, many things, he said, no, he, 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 he was happy to admit he made a mistake. It didn't matter that the mistake was big or small. He understood that the most important thing was to recover from a mistake. And my guru, Swami Satchananda, used to say, if you make a mistake, put it back. In other words, it's a mistake. There's a funny story that goes with this. Uh, there was a guy that hated this guru. And finally, he heard something about this guru, and he 
went up to him in front of everybody and said, you're a fraud. And then he started calling him out and doing all these things. And the, and the guru just sat there waiting for him, didn't say anything. Finally, the guy couldn't stand anymore. He says, I'm calling you out. Aren't you going to react? Well, the guru said to him, look, if you bring something to me as a gift, I always have the choice to accept it or not. So you brought all these nasty words and all these things here. I just don't want them. Here, take them back. That's the understanding. He didn't see this guy as separate from himself. A guru removes the darkness. That's what it means. Guru, the first part of guru means darkness. Not only just physical darkness, but mental, astral, causal darkness. And guru means to remove. But he doesn't do it by doing anything. All he does is reflect back to whoever's in front of him what the state of realization is in front of him. And one day you will do this too. Okay, so we're talking about Dharma. We're talking about all these different meandering roads that Dharma takes. Not able to know, having a procedure to fix it once you find out you've made a mistake. What's the point of all that? What's the point of realization? Is that you're happier. So when you go to a spiritual teacher, one of the things you want to ask yourself, am I happier? You don't have to say anything. You don't have to question. You don't have to do anything. This is a state of self-realization is all about you and how you feel about your karma, your thoughts. Tantra means to weave your thoughts and feelings into a reality. So let me ask you, if you weave your, if you are in control of your weaving of your reality, what do you want in it? Do you want to be happy no matter what the circumstance? Do you want to make the situation around yourself better no matter how bad it is? Yes, you do. And that's the only criteria that matters. Do those things that makes the happy flow. Thank you.